hey gorgeous so you've been emotionally triggered now what now what do you do well firstly well done for recognizing that you have been emotionally triggered things aren't exactly how you think they should be yesterday i spoke about an experience that i had where i was emotionally triggered and the impact that had on me it meant that i withdrew myself from a situation, I felt isolated, I felt fearful, I felt alone, I had withdrawn into my shell, and that had a negative impact on the people I was with and what I was experiencing and how I was managing what had created that trigger. I'll pop the video up above so you can go and take a look at what sabotage is and my success and how I stopped that, recognized that it was happening and it stopped it. This video is about, okay, I've been emotionally triggered, now what? How do I get myself out of feeling this way? How do I stop and manage this emotional trigger? So it's gonna be less likely to happen again and I have a better way to manage how I'm dealing with challenging situations that I find myself in. So if you wanna learn how to self-coach and navigate your way through being emotionally triggered so you can take the best action for yourself, then stay tuned because this video is exactly for you. Remember, as always, if you like what I'm sharing, please do subscribe, hit the notification bell so you're reminded of when future training videos come up in the future. If you are a woman who is highly motivated, wants to be more connected with self and your community and the people around you feel, for, feel more fulfilled and make a bigger impact in the world, then this channel is absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, for you. Okay, so let's get into it. What do you do when you have been emotionally triggered? What do you do when you find yourself just reacting in a way that you just feel that you've got no control over and that you don't want to keep you prisoner? Now, of course, I react internally when I get emotionally triggered, but some people will react in other ways. That could be through addiction, that could be through anger. There are lots of different ways that we deal with being emotionally triggered. For me, it's just about taking things internally. I close off, I go back into survival. The first thing you need to do, of course, is to recognize that you have been emotionally triggered. The more you bring your attention to how you are dealing with things on a daily basis emotionally and what it is that you are doing throughout the day, what's triggering you, it's much easier to identify that you are stuck in an emotional loop, that you have in fact been emotionally triggered. Now, all emotionally, all being, <laughs> being emotionally triggered just means that you have had some events happened in your past that have been negative or been traumatic, that something has happened in the here and now, in the future, and it has triggered those emotions, those strong feelings of that experience you had. Now, and that can be many layers. It can be layer on top of layer on top of layer. So it can be quite hard to make the connection between what's happening in the now, what's happened in the past, and what's triggered while you're behaving the way it is that you're behaving. But that doesn't mean it's not impossible. That is exactly what it is that I am going to share with you. So the good thing is though, here, absolutely 110% is once you recognize your emotional triggers, and you have embraced self-coaching, you will always have a way to navigate what is going on as soon as you identify what is playing out, once you recognize you have been emotionally triggered. 
you will be able to self-coach yourself consciously out the other end so you can make the best decision to move yourself forward and take yourself out of that emotional energy that keeps you well and truly stuck and unhappy and miserable and everybody else around you unhappy and miserable. You don't have to stay in that emotional loop. What you need to work on is changing your perspective. It is about identifying what the trigger is, what has caused that trigger in the past, why you behave the way you behave now, and what you can do to navigate yourself out of that. So it's about creating a new perspective. It's about understanding without getting into the emotional trauma of what's happened and to create some actions of how you can move forward the best way forward for yourself. So you do not have to stay in this emotional loop of bad energy, feeling depressed, feeling emotionally out of control, feeling like a victim. Once you start to get into a daily habit of self-coaching, you will be able to navigate yourself very easily around these circumstances it is that you're experiencing and if you're finding that something has it's triggered something something has come up and you feel that you need professional help well, that's brilliant you're recognizing that you need professional help to go and deal what it is that you have uncovered in my experience though the you will only uncover when you are ready to uncover, when you are ready to explore whatever that is. So a couple of things here is that if you are, if you're having suicidal thoughts, if you're feeling that you're overly anxious, if you're feeling that you're overly stressed, then you absolutely must seek professional medical help. That's really important. You can do this work at the same time, but you need to go and seek professional help. There is nothing wrong with that. I've had so much professional help over the years, which has helped me. That it's important that you recognize that and give that to yourself as a gift. Give yourself permission to get help. Anyway, I <laughs> just wanted to mention that because it's important because often we can struggle with these emotions for a very long time and we think they're normal and they're not necessarily how life should be. So it might be a case of that you just need to check things out with a professional to make sure that what you're experiencing is okay. I'm sure you've heard this before, but change your perspective, change your life, change your thoughts, change your life. This is what it is that we are going to be working through the conscious self-coaching process. And this is something that I have personally designed in the Co conscious coaching reflective toolbox. This is part of that process. It is that I'm going to be sharing with you. This is what I guide my clients through so they can get out of their way really quickly and play a much bigger game. But I wanted to focus this in on being emotionally triggered. How do you deal with it? Because it can feel all consuming. You can get lost in that emotional charge of that past experience without even understanding what's triggered it. Okay, so you've identified that you have been emotionally triggered. Brilliant, brilliant. We have something to work with. This is exciting. <laughs> this is exciting. Very exciting. First thing you want to do is to get two colored pens. Now these two colored pens, they need to be different colors from one another. You don't want two pens that are very similar to one another because it just makes the process confusing. You want to have either paper or a journal, a notebook. I go through a workbook, a journal um, once a month. So let me just give you an example here. Um, I'm not sure you can see it. So I've got red pen, blue pen, red pen, blue pen. So those are the two things you need to hand. Colored pens, two colored pens, either paper or a journal. I'd really encourage you to get a, you know, a notepad, a journal, pieces of paper, so you can make a commitment to yourself. 
to get under the skin of what's happening. The other thing that you need is to come with compassion, to come with a bit of TLC for yourself, not to come into conscious self-coaching from an inner critical point of view. This isn't about beating yourself up. This isn't about being hard on yourself. Now, the way we do this is by embracing two parts of our personality. So let me explain what I mean by that. We've got me and my experiences in the here and now with the baggage that I have from the past that I carry with me. You know, I can get emotionally triggered. I'm running my life (laughs) as consciously as I can, (laughs) but every now and again, I will be emotionally triggered. So one part is about the rawness of you, the rawness of what it is that you are experiencing in this moment. So that's one perspective and one part of your personality and another part of your personality, another perspective is to think about your higher self. And your higher self to me means the very best version of you. Who are you when you have absolutely no baggage, when you're not judgmental at all, when everything is as you want it to be? Who is she? She's compassionate, she's loving, she's got no baggage, she's got loads of tolerance. Whereas me, who's been emotionally triggered in the here and now, I could be feeling very negative, very critical, upset, alone, isolated. So there's two very different parts of perspective and personality it is that you can step into. So I'm not asking you to be somebody that you're not. What I'm asking you to do is to think about coming into the conscious self-coaching reflective practice with two different mindsets. So one is emotionally triggered you and the other is higher self version of you, which is about love, compassion, the very best version of you without any baggage. This is the person we're moving towards in this journey person with baggage trauma experiences you've been triggered here and now and the person you want to step into and become more like you're going to use one to mother the other you're going to use your higher self to nurture the person who you are now that's been emotionally triggered to give her some TLC, some compassion, some love to help her navigate and understand what has been playing out. Sound a bit woo-woo? It's actually not. It's actually, of course, I love this because it really helps me step into a better version of myself without being with being able to recognize those emotional triggers, but at the same time being able to crush them move past them, see them for what they are, create new belief system, create a new belief system and come out of being triggered much more quickly. And what that does for me is it means that I have a healthier, more compassionate, I'm more happy, I'm more fulfilled, I'm more on purpose, I'm making the impact I want to make. Everything is much brighter because I've opened the door to possibility and opportunity rather than getting stuck in those emotional triggers that really self-sabotage my my daily way of life it's not even success it's my daily way of life my daily way of being okay i think i showed you deny that um just in case i didn't i'll do it again <laughs> but okay you want to decide which color is going to be your higher self and which color is who you are now and your emotional experiences and your triggers. Which color are you going to use to be your higher self and who you are now within the the emotional, within the experience of what it is you're experiencing? Okay, so I'm not sure which way. I would say the red is my higher self because there's less writing and the blue is going to be the person, me, experiencing that emotional trigger. 
Okay, you ready? <laughs> oh, I love this. I love this. <laughs> okay, let me just check my notes and make sure that I haven't missed anything. Okay, so you're coming into the self-coaching process, into your journal, onto your paper, from your higher self and the person who is in the emotional turmoil or is dealing with something challenging, they're not happy about, they're not sure about. I do this every day, so I don't even need to be emotionally triggered. I just do it because it is brilliant for peak performance. It is absolutely, without a doubt, brilliant for getting out of your own way and staying out of your own way because you're, you are consciously watching your behavior every day. So you can quickly find out what those emotional triggers are. And remember what I said back at the beginning, if you change your, if you change your thoughts, you change your reality. If you change your perspective, you open the door to possibilities and new opportunities, which means that you're not going to be stuck where you are now. You're going to be moving towards your higher self consistently, the best version of you. And you're leaving all of that baggage that you have gathered over the years in the past. It's less likely to affect you. Okay, so when I'm journaling, when I'm doing this exercise on a daily basis, I will always start by asking myself a very easy question. So let me just have a peek. So, okay, so this is how I started my journal today. The question, okay, love, what's up? And then, so higher self writes that question, okay, love, what's up? And then, from the experiences I'm having in the here and now, in this moment, I will respond to that question. Okay, another question I asked myself to start this, the ball rolling, to start the self coaching off was, okay, lovely, what a couple of strange days you have had, so you got emotionally triggered, what happened? So, higher self again, love and compassion, asking myself an inquisitive question that I can answer and go into depth around. Another day I started with, how was yesterday? <laughs> so you can see I'm having a conversation with myself, but I'm coming at this from higher self, best version of me, from the person who I am experiencing living in the here and now. Now, what you want to do is your higher self will be asking inquisitive questions that is going to get under the skin of your experiences. And this is exactly what we want. There's no wrong or right answer. No wrong. There's no wrong or right question. It's just a question. And once you practice self-coaching, your questions will be better, will become better. You'll become more intuitive with yourself. You'll become more connected. You'll be able to tap into your higher self much more easily to be able to ask questions that just go down deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper down another layer and that's exactly what we want so i've asked myself that question as myself as my higher self okay love what's up i will answer it from the current moment depending on how i answer it will depend on how my higher self my intuitive self, the knowledgeable and the wisdom within me will ask the next question. So it's really about trusting yourself to ask yourself the right question. As I said, there is no right or no wrong question. There's no right or no wrong answer. And when you are asking questions from your higher self, you will know when you are trying to get away with not answering the question. So if you find yourself being a bit sneaky, because the ego is a bit sneaky, trying to wriggle your way out of answering a question, ask yourself the question again, just ask yourself the question another way. 
So you will answer it another way. And you can have convers you will be having a conversation with yourself. So I will repeatedly say to myself, whoa, that's a really great question. <laughs> So my higher self will have a conversation and I'll go, wow, that's really insightful. That's a really great question. What do you think? Or I'll do it the other way around and say, that's a really question, really great question. I hadn't thought about it that way. And then I will start exploring again and journaling and writing on the answer to the question. So what will happen is, is you will keep asking yourself questions until you feel that you can't answer the questions anymore. You'll just come to a natural end. So don't push it. Just let it go. Just, you know, if you've, if you've just written a page, that's fine. If you write five pages, that's fine. If you write 10 pages, that's fine. It is what it is. It's fine. It's about trusting the relationship and really getting to know yourself much deeper on a deeper level. There's no judgment here at all. Now, there's no judgment from your higher self, but what you might find is that the, what you're experiencing in the here and now, you may feel very judgmental, judgmental about yourself. You may be very hard and very critical on yourself. So step into her, step into your higher self and connect with her so she nurtures you so she gives you guidance and she says things like hang on where's where's the truth in that where's the reality in that where's the evidence in where's the evidence in that okay i understand that you are feeling that way that is completely understandable but let's explore this what's happening what's the situation so you can start gently questioning yourself and holding yourself accountable when you step into your higher self makes sense <laughs> once you get going it's just a natural process that you can and a journey that you can take yourself on so you always want to finish with insight knowledge you've gained wisdom it is that you've gained gained and it may be that it's not about taking action. It might just have been about getting that out, getting that out to be able to understand what it is that you're experiencing, to be able to see what's happened from another perspective, to really challenge the way that you are thinking about that experiencing. It's about what I say to my clients all the time. It's about connecting the dots. It's about connecting the dots from past experiences that you can get a new perspective on in the here and now. Because I bet you <laughs> a lot of what has been created in your mind that is keeping you emotionally triggered is in fact an illusion based in reality in the here and now. It's not saying what didn't happen happened. It's not saying what happened happened, but we get emotionally stuck in that trauma in that event which can which leads to us creating a false sense of self you know what we're seeing could just be an illusion that we're creating to keep ourselves safe it's not necessarily real even though it feels very real so conscious self coaching will really help you start to understand and navigate some of the things that are playing out for you so if you can finish with what's been the insight, what's been the wisdom it is that you have gained from the conversation it is that you have had with yourself. And if you can think about actions you can take to do things differently next time so you can get out of your own way. Now, what I would say is don't make those actions too big. You don't want to make them too big. You don't want to make them too challenging because you're just, well, the chance of you doing it is, it, it, you probably won't do it. So what you want to do is if, if something is quite big, you want to think about what's the middle ground. Okay, I can't do that just now, but what's the middle ground? What can I do? You know, what, what can I do to move myself forward positively? 
So if it's too big, just think about the middle ground. Because if we make it too big, sometimes that can just be a way of sophisticatedly hiding and keeping yourself in a loop. So if you can think of actions that you can take, inspired actions that you can take, brilliant. If you can't, don't worry about it. But you do want to recognize and think about the insight it is that you have gained from that conversation with the very best best version of you who you're moving towards and stepping into to help you navigate emotional triggers and the person it is that has been emotional triggered in the here and now. One of the things that I do is that to ground myself is I like to think about my higher self, what her, what are her values, what are her beliefs, what are her strengths, and then I will just pick a couple of her strengths. And whenever I find myself get emotionally charged again around this particular issue, is I will use her strength to manage the emotional trigger more effectively. And it might be a case that I need to come back and do some conscious self-coaching and journal again to explore it again and then create another action and then think about, okay, what has been working, what hasn't been working. So this is what I'm trying to say is this is a work in process. This is a work in progress. There is no right or wrong. The important thing is, is that you start recognizing your triggers that you're consciously awake of, okay, something doesn't feel quite right. I'm going to self-coach myself and explore this to see what is happening and start having that self-coaching dialogue with yourself because it will really, really help you navigate what is playing out. Okay, this has been a long one today. <laughs> if you've got any questions, honey, just leave them below. That would be absolutely awesome. Any questions, doesn't matter how big, how small, just leave them below in the chat box. That would be absolutely awesome. As you can tell, it is really hot here in Thailand at the moment. I'm going to have to um, go and cool down a little bit. But yeah, leave your comments in the chat box. Remember to subscribe. Let me know how you were getting on with conscious self-coaching. I would really, really encourage you to do this, even if you're not feeling emotionally triggered. If you want to feel more connected, more fulfilled, feel more abundant, then this absolutely will help you achieve those goals. Till next time, gorgeous. Have an absolutely awesome day.